Hello, it is I, once again, the Bruce Wayne of Azure Lane, back at it again for another Azure Lane video, and I am here to give you an update on my, uh, well, someone was asking about uh, some of the gears on my faction fleets, and if my faction fleets had stayed the same since the release of all these new ships, and uh, I'll just let you know, no, they haven't. They have changed. So, uh, this is the updated best balanced faction fleets, and uh, these are some particularly decent options for any other player if you wish to choose them. But, um, and some of you may be shocked to see this, but uh, right now I have my main Eagle Union fleet set up for PvP, and this is my PvP fleet. And yes, I did remove Biloxi and replace her with, in my opinion, what is the best Cleveland for this fleet and that is Columbia and I'll explain real fast really so if you go to Columbia um, this skill right here is the main reason so uh, you know the flagship skill decreases the damage your flagship takes by 25 percent so um, I found that in PvP or PvP even with so when, when my PvP fleet looks more like this um, even with Yorktown in the center having the angels feather which uh, this right here is a massive boost to your survivability by the way at least for a carrier like it says it's only 15 EVA but that 15 EVA does a lot you can feel it and then if you add it on to the EVA you get from the scepter uh, that could be a decent amount of survivability boost to your carrier uh, however what I have found is even with both of these in PvP my flagship carrier which is usually either Yorktown 2 here or Enterprise on occasion still kept getting you know eliminated so the only remedy for that in PvP was to use Columbia in place of Biloxi and I gotta say, it's way, it's a much better fleet, although Biloxi is still my number one waifu. And she does do more damage than Columbia, so that's her advantage. But, um, keeping the, my flagship carrier, Yorktown 2 in this case, alive long enough to launch her airstrike is more important and more effective at winning than the damage you would get from more damage of a Cleveland. So... Yes, my faction fleet. Oh, also, my Meowsifers have changed because um, I spent a crap ton of money uh, basically recycling these Meowsifers, uh, like talent points. Oh, by the way, one more thing I'd like to point out. It's very nice if you use Columbia here because if you look real closely, um, she gets a buff or is she either gets a buff or is buffing the entire back line. So she gets a survivability buff from... Uh, uh, New Jersey here and then she buffs survivability of Yorktown too and then she has synergy with independence which by the way um, it's funny that uh, Columbia and Stefan Potter both need to stay alive for their skills to work they are both some of the best uh, buffers for the back line and on top of that for some reason they are both chewing gum they're both you know always chewing bubblegum and the best thing about using Anchorage here is that Anchorage is the best ship for buffing the survivability of your Vanguard <laughs> so uh, yeah this is this is absolutely necessary and I also uh, you know got these uh, so these rainbow anti-air guns are the best for buffing the survivability of a Vanguard ship um, mainly because if a bunch of airstrikes come in, this is the best thing at saving your vanguard ship while also eliminating as many of those aircraft as possible. So, both Stefan Potter and Columbia have that gun. Yeah, you can see, you could, if you really want to see what I equipped them with, you could just check it here. But, um, yeah. And independence in most cases still is my top damage dealer because uh yeah she gets a nice she gives a nice buff to uh cleveland and in, in this case columbia 
but she gets this accuracy and AVI buff works incredible especially since everyone's using you know high EVA gear now and uh, on top of that oh real fast um, let me go to New Jersey here still incredible damage dealer just this this setup right here where has been working well for me and I don't plan on changing it I've never changed it so far since I got got all those uh, equipments you know up to uh, to 13 so this has been working out for me pretty well but also I got two very very good Meowsifer setups finally okay so first skill buffs New Jersey's reload second skill uh, for both CV this is the best skill you could get that actually buffs both your carriers and your light carriers because all the other skills um, all the other carrier buffing skills that are better than this one don't actually buff your light carriers at all. So independence can take advantage of this. The Eagle Union buff. Necessary for a faction fleet. Whole fleet gains 5 luck. Also necessary. And then uh, Stefan Potter can take advantage of this little torpedo bo boost right here. But this Meowsifer also has got a nice change up of skills. So another reload buff. For New Jersey excellent 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 uh, another Eagle Union buff I always keep I always keep this one and then uh, once again the best buff for both carriers and light carriers so now independence and Yorktown 2 can both take advantage of this which is wonderful uh, you have no idea how many times I had to reroll the talent points on this meow for all the gold I lost uh, I don't even want to think about it anyway and then uh, there's this skill that will give uh, Columbia and Anchorage a little bit of a firepower boost. But most importantly, whole fleet takes 3% less damage, which is incredibly important for Columbia and Stefan Potter. Because both their skills require staying alive in order for their buffs to work. So, uh, this is my Eagle Union fleet. Not much has changed except for Columbia and the Meowsifers. Also, Columbia is getting that nice buff from Stefan Potter. She's literally buffed by buffed or buffing the entire back line plus Stefan Potter. And then Anchorage, by default of being a tank, keeps her alive. So that's a nice, nice synergy. Uh, this fleet has performed incredibly well against much higher level uh, fleets that I have fought in. Um, or I should say not higher level fleets, but higher level commanders fleets um, in PvP. And uh, this is going to be my PvP, PvP fleet for a while. I'll do some PvP videos later. Um, my Eagle or my uh, Royal Navy fleet has had two changes. One, I replaced Unicorn with Implacable. And I don't think I need to stress how awesome Implacable is. Uh, she is one of the ships I oathed. And um, along with Plymouth. And then um, Scylla has replaced Sirius. And I'll just explain that right now, because... So, um, Sirius had these, like, little buffs for carriers, but Scylla's buffs for carriers is a big, big buff. So, here, I'll show you this. So, Scylla's Embrace. When the battle starts, if there are any other ships in your vanguard, increase this ship's torpedo and EVA by 20%. So, she gives herself an awesome survivability boost and a solid damage boost. Although her torpedo stat isn't much typical of the Ditto class. So, I'll just keep going. It's like, it's a nice buff if she was an actual torpedo boat. Anyway, when this ship fires her torpedoes, fires a level 10 special barrage. Damaged is based on the skills level. Enemies hit by this barrage take 6% increased aircraft damage for 6 seconds. Now, when six enemy aircraft have been shot down within your Vanguard's anti-air gun range, while this ship is afloat, your CVs and CVLs take 15% less damage. So she can make enemies 6% more vulnerable to carriers, and then she gives your uh, carriers a nice 15% damage decrease. Now, on top of that... 
Move on over to here. So your carriers get a uh, you know 15% damage decrease, but with Bologna they get a 15% or 15% damage dealing increase. So that is that is very much good. You, your your carriers both do more damage and take less damage by 15% at the same time. Uh, it's actually 21% if they get 21% uh, more damage if they get hit by Scylla's. Uh, barrage so both Scylla and Bologna together are incredibly good for carriers and they're both Royal Navy ships and then there's Plymouth who has that awesome battleship buff on top of being an awesome uh, light cruiser herself both in damage dealing she is I, I believe the top number one best damage dealer you could put in the vanguard and she's a decent tank she can serve as a main tank even so uh yeah this this front line right here is incredible and then the back line has both of these ships um i will say implacable is one of my favorite ships in the game for many 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 reasons <laughs> uh yeah, I'll just say that. I'll, I'll, I'll just leave that there. So, um, and then I do use Perseus because I have been using this as my mob fleet for the main campaign and for Operation Siren. And uh, Perseus keeps healing the fleet and then Implacable just does absolute devastation. And Vanguard is still clearly... Um, until... Okay, so until Queen Elizabeth gets a retrofit I'm gonna be using Vanguard although I will say um, if you have a Queen Elizabeth as your flagship and you use a unicorn in place of implacable Queen Elizabeth's reload buff will boost both of their uh, aircraft launches and basically make your whole fleet immortal because they're healing from each aircraft launch basically will keep your whole fleet alive indefinitely almost against incredible things that would kill most ships <laughs> so um anyway my royal navy fleet oh i did get two new meowsifers for them um after once again spending obscene amounts of gold that i don't even want to think about uh so yeah they both give so plus one eva for vanguard um once again this is the best carrier buff for both your light carriers and uh, fleet carriers so both Perseus and Implacable can take advantage of that Royal Navy buff absolutely necessary for a Royal Navy fleet uh, a nice buff for Vanguard admittedly there are better battleship buffs but it my uh, meow me officer came with this I need to stop pronouncing this incorrectly anyway uh, and then Forest's serenity which I used the ever-living daylights out of this skill in world 14 and it was absolutely necessary in world 14 so that is a very good meow me officer for that anyway uh and then the lime cat so once again best carrier buff you can have uh and then on top of that another eva boost for vanguard Royal Navy buff, absolutely necessary. And then here, another Forest Serenity. <laughs> because you can never have too many of these. And then on top of that, whole, the Mountain's Tenacity, whole fleet takes 3% less damage. So this is a super solid Meow uh, Officer. Excellent, excellent. And now, finally, uh... My Iron Blood Fleet, which I have changed up, and um, someone in the comment section of my last uh, Faction Fleet video was saying, why don't you just switch uh, Z-25 out for another Iron Blood ship, uh, particularly a destroyer, and then give Bismarck a full survivability build? And I tried that, and it actually worked spectacularly, so... <laughs> Whoever gave that suggestion, I need to look up that name and give some, you know, give some credit there. I need to look that up soon. But, um, let me see. Yeah, so, uh, 
I decided, although admittedly the VH armor plating and a uh, hydraulic steering gear would be better for survivability for Bismarck, um, what I found is the Rainbow AA gun actually does fix her low anti-air stat. Somewhat. Mostly. It's very effective at, you know, helping, you know, crutch up that weakness. And now, uh, I decided to try using the Hollow Live Gamers Mark and the Team Emblem on Bismarck. And they are actually very good for a battleship because it actually still makes her main gun somewhat usable, even though she has a weak main gun. Um, it's still somewhat usable with this because she does have that 3% damage buff. But she also has this massive health boost and EVA and accuracy boost. So uh, it was like somewhat of a blend of damage and uh, survivability. Heavily leaning on survivability, by the way. But uh, yeah, Bismarck has been surviving incredibly terrible things with this loadout. And I'm very happy to keep this loadout as is. Now... And also, Graf Zeppelin does boost her survivability by a little bit. Because she has that 15% uh, damage reduction for all Iron Blood ships. And I have still found August Von Percival. It's one of the best carriers in the game, even now. That Fate Simulation really buffed her up. But um, instead of using Z23 or Z25, uh, I've decided to move Emblem, or Emden, I mean, Emden to the center and use Heinrich, who can take way better advantage of Emden's firepower buff. And as far as Emden goes, so here's the one drawback to this. Emden, Prince Heinrich, and Agir are all very slow ships. So I gave Emden two advanced boilers to help boost the speed. And then on top of that, I gave Prince Heinrich uh the what is this called again the cosmic kicks to give an even further speed boost and that actually did fix the issue um and on top of that prince heinrich with this eva boost plus another strong eva boost from hydraulic steering still very survivable uh emden in but as long as she is in the center mostly survivable but if she has survivability issues you switch out her uh, secondary light cruiser gun with a destroyer gun, because then that use her that switches her skill from offensive to defensive. And then on top of that, um, a gear has been killing it just as is. I saw no reasons to switch her out. She is still by far one of, if not the best. Uh, she's still by far like I would say the second best main tank after Anchorage. So. Yeah, that's my Iron Blood fleet for you all right now. And I did get Iron Blood. Oh, so my Iron Blood officers did switch up a bit, I think. Let me check. I think this one's largely the same. Did one of these change? Okay, wait, let me go to the other one. I don't believe these changed, but anyway. So, uh... I think this one changed. Maybe. Anyway, this is a very good Meowsifer for this kit because you get this nice uh, reload boost and then you get on top of that this very nice... Uh, like, both of them have very good carrier buffs but on top of that, um, they also have very good, you know, the Iron Blood buffing skill and some good battleship buffs. So, this is my new Iron Blood ba most balanced faction fleet. Ladies and gentlemen, moving on to my Soviet fleet. By the way, one of you guys got upset at me in the comment section for calling these ships Russian ships. Um, I'm just going to let you know, I speak colloquially. That is, I speak using whatever the common terminology is, and everyone understands that these, for the most part, they are Soviet ships, but... They can also be called Russian ships, and everyone knows what you're talking about. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not seeking to offend anybody. I'm just going to tell you, I may slip up, even if I was trying not to call them Russian ships. I would slip up and call them Russian ships eventually sometime. So, uh, you know, 
don't you know, cut me some slack. Don't don't get upset over that. <laughs> I don't know any other way to say that. Anyway, so I've switched out both Tash Kent and um, Kirov for Kubyshev and Varishalov because these two Soviet light cruisers are actually way better than all the other uh, Soviet or earlier Soviet ships. Yeah, uh, Kronstadt is still the best main tank. And I did, I, I've en been enjoying using the Fairy Magic poster on Kronstadt lately, even though uh, there are better things to equip for her survivability. But this thing has been working out quite excellently for her. I see no reason to change that. And Varishalov, by the way, is top tier waifu material, as well as Kubyshev, who is also top tier waifu material. But uh, most importantly, what was it this? Uh, where's this skill? So here's the thing about using the faction buff with Kubyshev. I mean, not the faction buff, but a faction fleet with Kubyshev. So when the battle starts, increases this ship's firepower and accuracy by 15%. If there are any other Northern Parliament ships in your fleet, decreases this ship's cannon damage taken by 10%. Once per battle, when this ship has lost a total of 25%, of her max HP in battle. Restores 8% of this ship's max HP and increases your Northern Parliament Vanguard ship's crit damage by 30%. That is astounding for a buff for the Northern Parliament faction. Now you go on over to Varishalov and then you look at her skills and basically, where's her skill? Well, her, her skills basically, she gets this awesome secondary gun but um, she also slows down enemies. And then on top of that, yeah, this, this ship also has a decrease in cannon damage. So it's sort of like um, both of Varishalov and Kubyshev together, along with Kronstadt, are a lethal vanguard team for virtually any enemy because it's not based on... Um, no matter what weapons you use, you don't have to use, uh, like, you don't have to focus on light or medium armor only now. Um, you can use it on, you can use this ship on heavy armor, and Varishalov's secondary gun has a modifier of 100 against all armor types. So she can do considerable damage against heavy armor and all the other armor types, really. And also, Varishalov is kind of tanky. Like, her, her skills are very tanky. Anyway, so this is my new Russian fleet. Um, so far... Oh, by the way, I did get some new me officers, by the way. Um, so, check these me officers out. Although one of them is not loaded up to, you know, level 30 just yet. But it's pretty close. So, uh, I have the A skill, which both um, Volga and Chikolov can take advantage of. So... Whoopsie, I need to go back. So, uh, let me click this. Oh, wait, here we go. So, Volga and Chikolov can both take advantage of this skill, which is excellent. Um, this skill is the Soulful Warrior skill. Incredibly good for any battleship. But um, the thing is, when you use this with Gangit, and you have a black shell on Gangit, um, her main gun crit rate goes up by 11%, and she is firing fast. She fires four salvos in one minute, and each salvo she fires is a buff to the whole fleet. But uh, she has 11% more crit rate, which is... I mean, admittedly, Gangit isn't like a super strong battleship, but this is it's a very good thing that she can take advantage of. Whole fleet gains five luck. Uh... Increased reload for Gangit, whose reload is already high, so she's going to be shooting like a machine gun. And then I have a nice buff for all my cruisers. And the whole Vanguard is cruisers. So, perfect. <laughs> and then I have this officer who is not at level 30. Yeah, this is the one that's not at level 30. But I wanted a nice boost to my carriers. So... Whole fleet deals 3% more damage. Flames aggression. I got, by the way, this Meowficer I got 
has uh yeah it has flames aggression as a default skill and i was like dang i totally overlooked this one so i do have one that has flames aggression as a default skill and very good buff for carriers another not really great but okay buff for carriers and lastly another very good buff for carriers and when i get this meowficer up to level 30 i'm going to increase this buff right here assuming it gives me the opportunity but i really think it's going to give me the opportunity i hope it does anyway so that's a decent setup for a soviet russian fleet anyway moving on this is my so for all you wondering what my soccer empire fleet looks like this is it this is my soccer empire fleet and um admittedly i in my opinion unless you are facing light armor uh musashi is better than nagato in a soccer empire fleet as the main battleship although you could switch out um if you if you so needed to you could switch out one of these carriers for nagato but i prefer to use the carriers like, for instance, if you were to switch one out, I would recommend switching out Hakuryu for Nagato if you really wanted that buff. But so far, um, I would say Musashi's raw damage against medium and heavy armor outweighs Nagato's usefulness on the one exception being you are fighting a light armor enemy. And even then... Um, if you're fighting a light armor enemy, Nagato using an HE gun, although that's good, is not all that much better than Musashi with an HE gun. <laughs> so, um, just something to keep in mind. But, uh, yeah, I'll just, since I've, I've never done the faction fleet for Sakura Empire, I'll just show you right now. So, uh, Musashi, who is an absolute beast, by the way. Although, despite the cute smile, she, she is a killer. Don't let the cute smile fool you guys. She she murders the mobs. She murders heavy armor and medium armor. She's, she's pure evil. Anyway. So, I gave her... Uh, I gave her basically this loadout right here. Um, this shell. Although, the loadout I gave to New Jersey would perform better on her. Minus the Yamato gun. And minus this rainbow gun. But this boost her uh firepower incredibly well here's the important thing to note about using musashi she has very low anti-air for a ship of her class so if you run into enemies like heavy air uh heavy enemy air content i would recommend giving her the rainbow aa gun and giving her the american uh light cruiser gun to boost her aa as much as possible if you you know if you run into a plane hell or something but um, yeah, the Yamato gun on her is still the best performing gun. And this gives her the best firepower boost to increase the damage of her main gun. So keep that in mind. Moving on to Hakuryu. Um, yeah, Hakuryu, who I don't have fully leveled up yet. I'm working on it. But Hakuryu is also incredibly strong. Um, I don't have her skills fully leveled up. So... Yeah, she has a very good uh, assistant airstrike, but I would say this. Hakuryu, for the most part, um, I would say she's a very good damage dealer, but um, her, her most of her raw damage potential comes from her dive bomber slot. So if you could give her, like, let me show you this. She gets four dive bombers, I believe, and she has 145% dive bomber efficiency, which is incredibly powerful. So if you could give her a Tenrai, uh, Hakuryu would be killing it. Yeah, I until um, I have Hakuryu leveled up to the max, what I've been using is Taiho in this spot. And Taiho is also highly effective as a Sakura Empire carrier. So Taiho or Hakuryu, excellent choices for this slot right here. But here's the deal shinano is also incredibly powerful and the thing about shinano is um although most of her uh damage from her plane slots is concentrated on her torpedo bomber slot what i have found is um 
This right here is pretty much excellent for uh, boss fights. And on top of that, if you give her these two, uh, I have two Tenrise for her, by the way. If you give her two Tenrise and this plane, she will actually launch the Tenrise faster and do... I don't know what to tell her. Shinano is an incredible damage dealer. <laughs> She's a beast. Absolute beast. Um, absolutely awesome skills here. I mean, the main thing is what I wanted was a, a, a ship. Oh, and by the way, um, one thing is very important. So while she's afloat, she gives a very nice buff to your destroyers. And on top of that, um, yeah, as long as the fleet contains like three soccer empire ships, it decreases the damage she takes from main guns and aircraft by 20%. So she is incredibly both survivable and... Um, incredibly good for buffing destroyers but what's important is the vanguard in this case so she also gives a nice a nice buff to akuryu so um here's the deal and i will i will say uh, that azuma is a, admittedly a better tank than chikuma but chikuma actually does have a small buff for aircraft and um i personally like chikuma more than azuma so some bias did go into choosing Chikuma over Azuma as my main tank. Some bias did, but um, I have, you know, Chikuma, Kazagumo, and Shimakaze here as the buffs, and they both get buffed by Shinano quite well. But uh, Chikuma can buff both Shinano and Hakuryu, assuming her seaplane airstrike actually lands a hit. <laughs> so here's the thing is she has this this um this is her barrage so basically at the start of the battle and every 20 seconds decreases this ship's speed by five percent for three seconds and fires a level 10 special barrage uh damage is based on the skills level and this ship's firepower stat so keep that in mind the more firepower she has the more damage it deals but um it launches two seaplanes and the seaplanes drop bombs and they're supposedly aimed but admittedly whenever i've used this in practice the accuracy on these seaplanes has been a little iffy. Yeah, the, the pilots flying these seaplanes must have been drinking too much sake the night before or something. But anyway, I'll just continue. Enemies hit by seaplanes launched from this barrage have their speed decreased by 30% for 5 seconds. Both the following effects activate. If there is a Sakura Empire CV afloat in your main fleet when this barrage fires... 50% chance to inflict a 6% damage taken debuff for 8 seconds to enemies hit by the barrage. 100% chance to inflict one of the following randomly chosen debuffs for 10 seconds. A, a decreases EVA by 10%, B decreases accuracy by 10%, or C decreases enemy damage dealt by 10%. All of these are good. But, um, so here's the thing. That's a 6% damage increase. And then she has this skill. So when this ship speed decreases as a result of her skills activating, increases her evasion rate by 10% for the duration of the decrease, decreases this ship's damage taken by 20%. And when this ship takes damage, 70% chance to decrease her speed by 10%. And increase her reload, firepower, and EVA by 20%. So that's an incredibly tanky ship. Um, her tankiness falls behind both Agir and Azuma. But uh, she, she gives this nice 6% increase for carrier damage. Now you go over here to Kazagumo. And Kazagumo increases carrier's damage by 15%. So that's 21% increased damages for both your carriers. And when your carriers are Shinano and Hakuryu, 21% damage increase isn't half bad. That's that's some serious, some serious harm just dished out in one airstrike. Anyway, so um, and then on top of that, Kazagumo's skill um, restores you know, some of the HP of your CVs. So they both get this nice survivability boost on top of that. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And if your flagship is a CV, additionally restores 5%. So 
Yeah, you're going to be, um, and on top of that, Kazugumo is not a bad Torp damage dealer herself. Her one major drawback, actually, she's a great torpedo damage dealing uh, destroyer. She actually deals more damage with her torpedoes than most destroyers. Her one major drawback is the fact that she is extremely squishy. <laughs> she's so killable, she dies a lot of the time in heavy enemy content. So what I did is I gave her, um, to sort of mitigate that, I gave her the Celestial Body, which gives her a massive, um, which is th the dress here gives her a massive survivability boost. And then on top of that, um, stacked with a healing kit, she recovers 1% of her HP. But with both of these combined, that's a 1,050 health boost. So 1% of her HP is no joke considerable for boosting her survivability. But Kazugumo's survivability is still terrible. <laughs> it's still lacking. I'll just I'll just point that out. Anyway, uh, Shimakaze. I don't think I need to explain many of the reasons why Shimakaze is the absolute torpedo damage dealing beast of any Vanguard. She is at you know the queen torpedo damage dealing ship in the game. But so um, her survivability, although it is decent. Uh, she does greatly benefit from using the Boundary Crossing Permit. Because uh, when it equipped by a Soccer Empire ship, and when the battle starts, deploys a shield that can absorb up to 100 damage around the ship equipping this gear. So, I would say... Um, and then it gives her a nice both a HP boost and a Torpedo boost. So, um, and then a Repair Toolkit just to keep her even further alive for longer. So, um, I would say... Shimakaze is an absolute damage dealing beast that is totally worth keeping in the Vanguard. And um, this is my Soccer Empire fleet, ladies and gentlemen. They have done incredible work together. Thank you, Soccer Empire ladies. Um, I would say also, I oh wait, I need to go to my Meowsifers. Let me show you these Meowsifers real fast. Okay, so um, admittedly, this one can gain one more talent point, so not fully leveled up yet, but working on it. Soccer Empire buff, incredibly nice. Um, nice cruiser buff that only Chikuma can take advantage of at the moment. And then uh, a reload buff primarily aimed at helping Musashi. <laughs> she needs reload buff, by the way. And then uh, the Destiny skill. Now, here's the thing about this Destiny skill. I did not initially like this, but... Keep in mind, I'll show you the next Meowsifer, and you'll see that this balances out. So, your whole fleet gains 10% or 10 firepower, 10 torpedo, and AVI, but loses 3 luck. Now you go on over to here. And now you see my other Meowsifer, which totally balances it out with this skill. Whole fleet gains 5 luck. So, there we go. Now the whole fleet has 2 luck. And it did it say two or three? Anyway, whole fleet has more luck than they started out with. And uh, that skill is actually not a detriment to my fleet. And then on top of that, holy carrier-based Meowficer. So, uh, reload boost, AVI boost. AVI and reload boost. <laughs> and then on top of that, this is just the cherry on top of the cake. Whole fleet deals 3% more damage. So that's my Soccer Empire fleet. Massive carrier focused Meowficer here. Just to help Hakuryu and Shinano. And, uh, yeah, this fleet is, I don't know, this fleet's pretty good so far. It's been, it's done incredible work for me. Although I will admit, Azuma is a better tank than Shikuma. And, um, in some cases, in heavier more painful damage content of the game, you may actually want to replace Chikuma with Azuma. Because um, if Chikuma dies, Kazugumo is next. And her survivability means she will be gone in no time flat. <laughs> if, whatever, if whatever could take out Chikuma uh, got her, Kazugumo will not survive. She got to be gone in no time. Okay. Anyway. And uh, this is my current uh, French fleet that I have been using. And um, admittedly, this still needs more testing. I mean, I tested this French fleet, kind of. So I'm going to go back and start testing my French fleet again. 
um, cause I'm not sure this is the best balanced French fleet you could get, but this is just what I have been using momentarily. It's probably better if you moved, uh, hang on a second. It'd be probably better if you moved Algier to the back and then had, uh, St. Louis up front. But admittedly, this needs a lot more testing. So I'll hold off on the French fleet until then. Oh, and by the way, um... I also have full Iron Blood uh, submarine fleet here, and they do pretty well. Yeah. Excellent Meowficer here for the sub fleet. He has the Flames Aggression skill, massive torpedo boost skill, massive torpedo boost. And then, I mean, that just came with it. I couldn't get rid of it. But, you know, keeping the Flames Aggression skill is what's very important for that submarine fleet. And then this Meowficer... Massive torpedo boost, or not torpedo boost, um, submarine boost. Very good for boosting submarines, and on top of that, whole fleet takes 3% less damage. So, um, this is my submarine fleet, in case y'all wanted to see that. And then I have a Eagle Union submarine fleet, but admittedly, this needs work, and it's not fully leveled up yet. So, I will come back to that later. Anyway, that's all I got for you today my fellow Shikikans. I'd like to wish you all a farewell and following seas. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe. Take it easy, guys.